M4A4 FL10 was one of the last major modifications of the medium tank US M4 in the mid-1950s. This modification was carried out by France for Egypt, which needed a more powerful vehicle to counter the fierce Israeli armored forces, which, although inferior in numbers, were superior in firepower and training. The new vehicle, developed on the basis of a French project of a few years earlier, the M4A1 FL-10, entered into service in 1955 and remained operational at least until 1967, participating in two of the most important wars of the Arab-Israeli conflict, the Suez Crisis of 1956 and the Six-Day War of 1967. Hello, and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voice article. I'm your host, Dan, and today we'll be covering the M4A4 FL-10 in Egyptian service. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. After the war, 1,254 vehicles based on Sherman hulls were delivered to the Armée de Terre, or, in English, land army, and were used by many French armored units into the early 1950s. In early 1951, the modern AMX 1375 light tank was accepted into French service and the Sherman was gradually removed from service in favor of more modern vehicles. The Armée de Terre removed the Sherman from service in 1955, while the Gendarmerie did not remove the last Sherman until 1965. The easiest way to improve the ability of the Sherman to deal with more modern enemy vehicles was to replace the main armament. But modifying the Sherman's turret, as the Israeli M50, was very expensive. Thus, it was preferred to directly install the FL-10 Type A early production turret on the vehicle. This was lighter and less armored than the standard Sherman turret. The main armament would be the same as on the AMX 1375 and the M50 the CN 7550 cannon. The prototype was built based on the M4A1 hull, but Compagnie Générale de Construction de Bataillon Châtillon planned to produce this Sherman variant on any type of Sherman hull, from the M4 to the M4A4, depending on the buyer's requirements. The problem with the upgrade project was the attempt to combine the characteristics of the modern AMX 1375 light tank with the older M4 Sherman medium tank. The French tank was a small vehicle with very thin armor, meant to be as light and fast as possible, reaching 60 kilometers per hour on roads, and had a very low silhouette to facilitate camouflage and to make it a less visible target. The armament was, however, among the most powerful in service, able to penetrate the frontal hull armor of a T-54 at a distance of almost 1,000 meters. The M4A1 FL-10 had a maximum speed of only 38 kilometers per hour and was a very tall tank three meters exactly, thus losing two characteristics of the AMX 1375, speed and concealability. Another problem was that the turret was too light and poorly armored, resulting in it being unable to resist even smaller caliber weapons, such as 20mm armor piercing rounds. The project was, therefore, abandoned by Armée de Terre and was proposed to the Israelis as an economic alternative to their project of arming the Sherman with the CN 7550 cannons. After the clear Israeli refusal, France received a request for help from another Middle Eastern nation that was looking to upgrade its Shermans. The Kingdom of Egypt had attempted to get its first shipment of Shermans from Great Britain in January 1947. The British tried to deliver 40 surplus Shermans to the U.S. Army that were crammed into a warehouse in Ismailia, but without success. By 1952, Egypt took possession of another 50 to 70 Shermans from the British stocks in Egypt and Europe. Most were M4A4s, although some M4A2s and several specialized variants, such as armored recovery vehicles, dozers, and self-propelled guns, were also acquired. In 1952, the Egyptian army had a total of 90 Shermans in addition to self-propelled guns and ARVs. In 1955, the Egyptian army was looking for modern equipment with which to re-equip itself after the bitter defeats suffered during the Israeli War of Independence. Not siding ideologically with either the Warsaw Pact or NATO countries, Egypt was able to purchase military surplus from various nations on either side. 
In 1955, however, Egypt had few medium tanks. Only 230 T-34 85s were in service in 1956. The rest would arrive after the Suez Crisis. It needed large quantities of materiel to outclass the Israeli armored forces in a hypothetical clash with the troops of the Israeli Defense Force. Even if they were already working with Israeli technicians on the M50 prototypes, the French had no problem working with Egypt in order to improve the older Sherman. After contacting the French, the Egyptians asked them to re-engineer their M4A4 fleet. The French proposed to upgun the Egyptian Shermans, mounting the FL-10 turrets to cut the cost of turret modifications. All Egyptian M4A4s were re-engined, and over the course of several years, some 50 M4A4s were rearmed with the FL-10 turret. The vehicle's frontal armor was 51 mm thick, sloped at 56 degrees, with 38 mm vertical plates on the sides and 38 mm at 20 degrees at the rear. The lower armor was 25 mm thick, while the roof armor was 19 mm. It was decided to power all the Egyptian M4A4s with the diesel engines of the M4A2 in order to offer logistical commonality between the two vehicles. The engine of the M4A2 was the General Motors GM6046, which actually consisted of two six-cylinder engines coupled together, with a total capacity of 14 liters, delivering a gross power of 410 horsepower at 2,900 RPM. Like all oscillating turrets, the FL-10 had an upper part that could move vertically and a lower part that could rotate the entire structure through 360 degrees. The lower part was mounted on the Sherman chassis and was equipped with the turret basket with 75mm ammunition, the radio equipment, and the turret rotation mechanism. The upper part was equipped with the commander and gunner's seats, the main gun, the coaxial machine gun, various optical systems, and the automatic loader. The advantage of such a turret is that, at any elevation, the gun, the breech, and the automatic loader will always be on the same axis, thus making the functioning of the automatic loader far simpler. The rear bustle contained the automatic magazine aligned with the axis of the cannon breech. The automatic magazine consisted of two six-round cylindrical revolvers that could be loaded from the outside through two upper hull hatches, or, less conveniently, from the inside. The cannon mounted in the FL-10 turret was the CN-7550, Canon 75mm Modèle 1950, also known as the 75SA-50, 75mm Semi-Automatique Modèle 1950, also known as the 75SA-50, or 75mm Semi-Automatique Modèle 1950 L61.5, with a 4.612 meter long barrel. This powerful French high-velocity gun was curiously derived from the 7.5cm Kampfwagen Kanona 42 L70 of, of the Panzerkampfwagen 5 Panther. Developed by the Atelier de Bourges in 1950, it was the best 75mm anti-tank gun of the time and managed to beat the US, the British, and the Soviet guns of similar calibers. The automatic magazine allowed a rate of fire of 12 rounds per minute, or one round every five seconds twice the rate of fire of an Israeli M50. The high rate of fire could be sustained for the 12 rounds stored in the two auto-loader drums in the turret's rear. The secondary armament consisted of a Browning M1919A4 30-06 caliber machine gun in the hull, in a spherical mount used by the navigator, and another one as a coaxial machine gun. Externally mounted were four Model 1951 Premier version 80mm smoke launchers that could be activated from inside the tank. A total of 60 rounds of 75mm ammunition were carried, while 5,000 rounds of 30 6 were carried for the Browning machine guns. Twelve M4A4 FL-10s were able to participate in the Suez Crisis. Uh, on the day of the beginning of hostilities, Egypt had at its disposal in Sinai three companies of Shermans assigned to the 3rd Armored Battalion of the 3rd Infantry Division. A total of 40 standard Shermans, 12 M4A4 FL-10s, and six Sherman ARVs. One of the companies of 16 tanks was positioned in Rafah, along the border between the Gaza Strip, Egypt, and Israel, while the other two remained in El Arish. At dawn of October 30th, 1956, the Israeli 7th Armored Brigade under the command of Yuri Ben-Ari began the attack, starting Operation Kadesh. The city of Rafah was defended by 17 Archer tank destroyers, 16 Shermans, and various artillery units. 
The Israeli 77th Division and the 27th Armored Brigade equipped with the first batch of 25 M50 Digim Aleph, or Model A, Shermans. This brigade also had two companies equipped with M1 Super tanks. One half-tracked company equipped with M3 half-tracks, a motor infantry battalion, and a light reconnaissance battalion equipped with AMX 1375s. On the night of October 31st, members of the Golani Brigade, supported by the half-tracks of the 27th Brigade, attacked the Rafah crossing from the south, liberating it by morning. This allowed the tanks to pass through the north road and enter Sinai, heading towards El Arish. The next day, the 27th Armored Brigade succeeded in overcoming the minefields in Sinai under heavy Egyptian barrage and established a perimeter along the eastern outskirts of El Arish. On November 2nd, the 77th Division entered El Arish, occupied it, and took possession of all the military depots. The division advanced further, arriving only 20 kilometers away from the Suez Canal. There is a lot of photographic evidence showing the capture of some M4A4 FL-10s by the Israelis, along with about 50 T-34-85s. In other words, all the Shermans at El Arish and at Rafah not destroyed, and other vehicles. Some sources claim that as many as eight of the 12 M4A4 FL-10s were captured intact. All captured Egyptian Shermans were converted to the Israeli standard, even some of the eight M4A4 FL-10s. These received a suitably modified standard Sherman turret in place of the FL-10 turret. They were probably later upgraded to the Degim Bet, or Model B standard in the early 1960s, receiving a new Cummins VT8460 turbo diesel delivering 460 horsepower and horizontal volleyed suspension system, remaining in service with the IDF until 1975. After the military defeat during the Suez Crisis, Egypt stopped buying NATO vehicles and started to buy Soviet equipment, ordering 350 T-54s and 150 T-55s between 1960 and 1963. At the outbreak of the Six-Day War, four mixed companies of Shermans were deployed in the Sinai and Gaza Strip by the Egyptian army for a total of about 80 vehicles on the Sherman hull. Their employment was very limited and affected by poor reliability due to poor maintenance and a lack of spare parts. The Six-Day War was the military Israeli response to the deterioration of diplomatic relations with Egypt, Syria, and Jordan, which had always been very turbulent. After a series of provocations from the three Arab nations, the Israeli Defense Force made a surprise attack on June 5, 1967. The Israeli southern attack towards the Sinai foresaw, as in the 1956 war, an attack on Rafah and, from there, a move westwards to the northern track passing through El Arish. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Dayan had required that only Rafah and its surroundings be attacked, ignoring the rest of the Gaza Strip. In Rafah, the Egyptians put up a strenuous resistance, losing more than 2,000 men and 40 Shermans, of which about half were equipped with the FL-10 turret. They caused the 7th Israeli Armored Brigade significant losses. At sunset, the Israelis had liberated all the central southern part of the Strip and had occupied the Ali Muntar Ridge that dominates Gaza. On the morning of June the 6th, the 11th Brigade, supported by the 35th Brigade of the paratroopers under Colonel Rafan Aitan, succeeded in conquering the whole strip, losing a total of about 100 soldiers. During the attack on the Sinai, which lasted from June 5th to June 8th, the Israelis occupied the entire Sinai Peninsula. They defeated four armored divisions, two infantry divisions, and one mechanized division, totaling 100,000 Egyptian soldiers, 950 tanks, 1,100 armored personnel carriers, and 1,000 artillery pieces killed, destroyed, captured, or wounded. On June 7th, a mixed Egyptian unit attempted a counteroffensive to repel the attackers. This poorly planned and uncoordinated action ended up breaking against the Israeli lines without causing major damage to the IDF, and causing even more losses among the Egyptian troops. In this attack force, there were some M4A4 FL-10s, although these were easily destroyed by the Israelis. This was the last action of the M4A4 FL-10. The M4A4 FL-10 was a good fallback vehicle with mediocre quality. However, it was economically viable for third world countries or nations that could not afford the latest generation of vehicles. Egypt did not use these to their full potential because of poor training of tank crews and poor maintenance given to the vehicles. It was, on paper at least, equal or superior in many aspects to the Israeli M50 Digim Aleph 
but, because of these problems, it never managed to achieve the same success as the Israeli vehicle on the battlefield. This concludes our video on the M4A4 FL-10. If you liked this vehicle, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to these vehicles in the full article, which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these vehicles, please consider donating to our Patreon or PayPal. All the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.